From Pacifica, this is Democracy Now! It could be the worst nuclear disaster in history. Japan's Fukushima Daiichi power plant continues to leak radiation. We speak with Dr. Michio Kuku, a Kaku, a famous Japanese-American physicist. The Japanese government's working to ease fears with the upgrade of a nuclear severity level to seven on par with a Chernobyl nuclear disaster. In a public address, Japanese Prime Minister Khan said radiation from the damaged Fukushima Daiichi plant is decreasing. The International Atomic Energy Agency, meanwhile, says the latest food sample data indicates contamination is below dangerous levels. IAEA spokesperson Dennis Flory also said Japan's nuclear crisis is not comparable to Chernobyl. The mechanics of the accidents are totally different. One happened when the reactor was at power uh, and the, the reactor containment exploded. Uh, in Fukushima, the reactor was stopped, and the containment, uh, even if it may be somehow leaking today, and we do not know, uh, the containment is here. So this is a totally different accident. Residents living near the Fukushima plant gathered in protest at its operator, TEPCO's Tokyo headquarters earlier today. The rally was organized by a group representing the tens of thousands forced to evacuate their homes. At a news conference, TEPCO President Masataka Shimizu said the company would begin efforts to compensate those affected by the crisis. I would like to offer my heartfelt apologies to all for having so widely troubled people. I would like to deal honestly in consultations with the government and according to the atomic energy damage compensation law with the various nuclear radiation damage caused by the most recent disaster. More on Japan after head the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Japanese Prime Minister Naoto Khan tried Tuesday to calm fears about radiation levels and food safety in the region around the heavily damaged Fukushima nuclear power plant. His comments came after Japan raised the severity rating of its nuclear crisis to the highest possible level, heightening concerns about the magnitude of the disaster. Speaking at a news conference to mark one month since the massive earthquake and tsunami devastated the northeastern coast of the country, Japanese Prime Minister Khan said produce from the region around the Fukushima plant is safe to eat despite radiation lakes. From now on, people should not fall into an extreme self-restraint mood, and they should live life as normal. To consume products from the areas that they have been affected is also a way in which to support the area. We should enjoy the use of such products and support the areas that have been affected. I ask you to do this. A spokesperson for the International Atomic Energy Agency said the latest food sample data indicates levels of contamination are below the limits set by domestic authorities. Dennis Flory, IEEA spokesperson, also said yesterday Japan's nuclear crisis was not comparable to Chernobyl. The mechanics of the accidents are totally different. One happened when the reactor was at power uh, and the, the reactor containment exploded. Uh, in Fukushima, the reactor was stopped, and the containment, uh, even if it may be somehow leaking today, and we do not know, uh, the containment is here. So this is a totally different accident. Japanese officials said they raised the severity level to seven because of the total release of radiation at the Fukushima Daiichi power plant, not because of a sudden deterioration in the situation. The 1986 Chernobyl disaster is the only other nuclear accident rated at the highest level seven on a scale developed by the International Atomic Energy Agency to assess nuclear accidents. But officials insist so far the power plant in Japan has released one-tenth as much radioactive material as Chernobyl. To discuss the 
situation in Japan, as well as his latest book. We're joined by Dr. Michio Kaku, a Japanese-American physicist, a best-selling author, professor of theoretical physics at City University of New York and the City College of New York. His brand new book is Physics of the Future, How Science Will Change Daily Life by 2100. Welcome to Democracy Now! It's great to see you again. Glad to be on the show, Amy. So, talk about uh, this raising of the category level to seven uh, on a par with Chernobyl. Well, uh, Tokyo Electric has been in denial trying to downplay the full impact of this nuclear accident. However, there's a formula, a mathematical formula by which you can determine what level this accident is. This accident has already released something on the order of 50,000 trillion becquerels of radiation. You do the math. That puts it right smack in the middle of a level 7 nuclear accident. Still less than Chernobyl. However, radiation is continuing to leak out of the reactors. The situation is not stable at all. So you're looking at basically a ticking time bomb. It appears stable, but the slightest disturbance, a secondary earthquake, a pipe break, uh, evacuation of the crew at uh, Fukushima could set off a full-scale meltdown at three nuclear power stations far beyond what we saw at Chernobyl. Um, talk about exactly, I mean, as a physicist, to explain to people exactly what has taken place in Japan at these nuclear power plants. Think of driving a car and the car all of a sudden lunges out of control. You hit the brakes. The brakes don't work. That's because the earthquake wiped out the safety systems in the first minutes of the earthquake and tsunami. Then your radiator starts to heat up and explodes. That's the hydrogen gas explosion. And then to make it worse, the gas tank is heating up and all of a sudden your whole car is going to be in flames. That's the full-scale meltdown. So what do you do? You drive the car into a river. That's what the utility did by putting seawater, seawater from the Pacific Ocean in a desperate attempt to keep water on top of the core. But then seawater has salt in it, and that gums up your radiator. And so what do you do? You call out the local firemen. And so now you have these Japanese samurai warriors. They know that this is potentially a suicide mission. They're coming in with hose water hose water trying to keep water over the melted nuclear re reactor cores. So that's the situation now. So when the utility says that things are stable, it's only stable in the sense that you're dangling from a cliff, hanging by your fingernails, and as the time goes by, each fingernail starts to crack. That's the situation now. What about the food, the level of contamination of the food? They're increasingly banning food exports. The tragedy is this accident has released enormous quantities of iodine, radioactive iodine-131, into the atmosphere, like what happened at Chernobyl, about 10% the level of Chernobyl. Iodine is water-soluble. When it rains, it gets into the soil. Cows then eat the vegetation, create milk, and then it winds up in the, the milk. Farmers are now dumping milk uh, right on their farms because it's too radioactive. Foods have to be impounded in the area. And let's be blunt about this. Would you buy food that says made in Chernobyl? And the Japanese people are also saying, what, should I buy food that says made in Fukushima? We're talking about the collapse of the local economy. Just because the, the government tries to lowball all the numbers, uh, downplay the severity of the accident, and that's making it much worse.